for today class, um, for government class, we're going to be looking at rights and responsibilities. Okay? And the standard for today is explain rights and responsibilities of American citizens. And by the end of class, you guys are going to have to apply the principles of rights and responsibilities to a real life freedom of speech scenario. Okay? All right, so to start class off, um, tell me some ideas you guys have about either rights or responsibilities that American citizens have. A right or responsibility? What do you got? The right to vote. The right to vote. Okay. And I'm going to put a question mark by that one. And responsibility. Because that might also be a responsibility, isn't it? Okay. Very good. Okay. Yes, Drew. Taxes are a responsibility. Taxes are a responsibility. Does anyone know what happens if you do not pay your taxes? What do you got, Desmond? The government will track you down. They will track you down, and what will the government do with you when they find you? Put you in jail. Let me see hands. Let me see hands. In the back, Morgan. Uh, you have a right to... Oh, wait, wait. We're still on taxes. Oh, taxes. When the government finds you, because you haven't paid your taxes, what are they going to do to you? Oh, I'm not sure. Who knows? What's the government going to do to you? They find you and they throw you in jail. They find you, and if you don't pay the fine, they throw you in jail. Okay. Okay, um, okay now, Morgan, you have another right or responsibility? Uh, yeah. You have a right to follow the law. Is that right? You have a right to follow the law, or is that your responsibility? Okay, let's put that one over here. Okay, who's got another right for us? Freedom what do you have, Justin? Religion. Freedom of religion. Okay. And does anyone know where, like, freedom of religion, where do we know that, how do we know we have freedom of religion in Americans? The First Amendment. Oh, the First Amendment of what? The Constitution. The Constitution. Okay. Very good. Is there anything else in the First Amendment besides freedom of religion? Speech. Speech. All right. Very good. Okay, I'll give one more minute if anyone has another idea. Yeah. Assembly. Assembly. Oh, what is that? The right to gather wherever you want, eat wherever you want. Okay, very good. Now, do some of these rights, and think about free speech in particular, and to assemble, do those rights have any limits? Yes. yes. They do. Can anyone give me an example of a limit of assembly or speech? Yeah, Bryce. Um, you can't harass anyone with speech, and you can't threaten them with death threats. Okay, so to threaten someone, it can be terroristic threatening, and you've gone over your right. Okay, Drew, what do you have? You can't say that I have a bomb. Okay, <laughs> why, and why can't you yell out in a crowded place, I have a bomb? Because that could cause Okay, so if you threaten public safety, that's your limit on your free speech. Okay, very good. Alright, so what I want to do now is just explain one concept with you guys, and then we're going to look at a real life case, um, Tinker vs. Des Moines. Okay? And the main idea here is that rights and responsibilities, they go together. They're like two sides of a coin, you can't separate them. Okay? And let me give you an example. Let's say taxes. All of us have a responsibility to pay taxes. Okay? Now the opposite is the right of that. Okay? Do you guys enjoy anything in our society that taxes pay for? Can you yes. Pay for what? Oh, wait. Running water. Okay, you got running water that taxes pay for. Smooth roads. Public transportation. Okay, public transportation. Recreational parks. Recreational parks. Okay, all great examples. Have you guys yet in your life paid much taxes compared to adults? No. no. Yeah, okay. our parents do that. But yet you still enjoy that, right? So you're enjoying the rights before you have big responsibilities with it. Okay? And we're going to learn now that in freedom of speech, there's also rights and responsibilities that go together. Okay. So what we want to do is look at um, this case called Tinker versus Des Moines. Okay? And this is where you guys are in groups of three. We're going to need um, the reader from the group to um, answer a paragraph, or to read a paragraph, okay? So why don't we just start in the front, and who's the reader in your next group? Okay, Kayla, would you mind reading the first paragraph under the summary? 
1965, some middle and high school students wore black armbands to school to show their protest of the war in Vietnam. Before the day of the protest, the school's principals have had heard about the students' plan and told the students that they could not wear the armbands. Five students were suspended from school for wearing the armbands. Okay, thank you very much, Kayla. Okay, who's in our next group who's the reader? All right, Desmond. Students and teachers have First Amendment rights even when they are not, even when they are at school. They do not leave their freedom of speech or freedom of expression behind when they walk throughout through the schoolhouse gate. Even so, teachers and principals must keep order at school so that learning can take place. In a school setting, therefore, the First Amendment must be applied in a special way to protect free speech and keep order at the same time. Very good. Okay, next group. A student at school may express opinions even though even about controversial subjects like war. However, the student may not disrupt learning or interfere with other people's rights. The First Amendment does not protect student speech that disrupts class or causes trouble between classes, and school rules can prohibit that kind of speech. Okay. Thank you, Dylan. Back. There is no evidence that the student's armbands disrupted class or any school activity. Outside class, a few students students made nasty remarks to those who wore armbands. However, there were no threats or acts of violence on the school grounds. Okay, very good. Next group. The trial court had decided that because the principals were afraid the armbands would be disruptive, it was reasonable for the principals to suspend the students for wearing them. The trial court, however, did not understand the importance of freedom of speech. In our legal system, a general fear of disruption is not enough to take away someone's right to freedom of expression. After all, a disruption could happen any time one person says something that another person disagrees with. Okay, and I'll read the last one. Schools cannot prohibit speech unless they have good evidence that the speech will be disruptive. They cannot prohibit speech only to avoid the uncomfortable situation of someone expressing an unpopular opinion. Okay, so you guys got the picture, yeah? 1969, very tumultuous time in our history, Vietnam War is going on, and these students decide to protest by wearing black armbands with a peace sign on it, okay? And the Supreme Court had already found out that symbolic speech, like an armband, is the same thing as expressing something written or with, you know, saying something. Okay? So the question here is, are they, is it protected by the Constitution? Flip the page over, and there's five questions here um, under Section A. <clears throat> it says, mark it up. Okay? I want you guys in the front to do number one. Okay? Um, this group here, you guys got question two. All right, you guys have question three. You guys have question four, and then you guys have question five. Okay, and you guys are like your own group. So you guys are with them. You're done. Okay. So take two minutes, two or three minutes. Look at the text. Look at your question. Go back to the text, and I'll give you a hint. All of the answers are in the. They're not in the first two paragraphs. They're in the bottom paragraphs. Okay, and if you're having a hard time finding your answer, I'll come around and kind of, you know, help you if you need. Okay, and then the reporter needs to be ready to share your answer. In okay, let's come back together, and now it's the reporter's chance to share. Okay, so question one um, says. Under what circumstances are schools allowed to prohibit speech or expression? Find two places where it talks about that. So what, what can happen where a school can prohibit the expression? Um, it says, however, the student may not disrupt learning or interfere with other people's rights. The First Amendment does not protect student speech that disrupts class or causes trouble between classes, and school rules can prohibit that kind of speech. Okay. That's a great answer. So, the two places where a school can stop free speech is if it's disrupting learning or infringing on other people's rights. And you may have never thought of it this way, but every student basically has a right to learn. And so if another student's doing something that infringes on that, that steps on that, then you have a problem, right? <coughs> with rights. All right, very good. Do you think maybe people would disagree about what that word means, disrupt? Okay, I think there's room for a debate there. Okay, let's go to the second group. Who has question two? Oh, reporter. Okay, this one is one thing happened that shows the armed man might have caused disruption. What was that one thing? 
Okay. So one thing might have been that outside of class, a few students made nasty remarks to those who wore armbands. Okay. But it was outside of class, not in class. Okay. So you're saying because it happened outside of class, that doesn't count as a real disruption yeah. for learning? Your guys' the um, question is, is it enough if the school is afraid there might be disruption? Find the answer and underline it in red. No, it is not enough. Because in our legal system, general fear of disruption is not enough to take away somebody's right to freedom of expression. Okay. So just the principal's fear that something might happen is not enough to take away free speech. That's what it's saying. All right. Future lawyer here. Thank you. Okay. Now group four. Your guys' question was, would it matter if there is a disruption at lunch or between classes instead of during class? What do you think? The First Amendment does not protect students' speech that disrupts class or causes trouble between classes. And school rules can prohibit that kind of speech. Okay, very good. All right, and lastly, group five. Schools can prohibit speech if they have good what? That speech will be disruptive. Sorry. Okay, good. Um, What's the answer? Uh, evidence. Okay, evidence. So they have, the school principal has to have evidence that there's going to be a major disruption. Okay? Let me throw a test case at you. Pretend it's not 1969, but it's 2015, and the principal's made aware of the night before school on Facebook, somebody threatened another student over wearing armbands to protest something. Is that enough evidence that there would be disruption? Okay, I would say, I would say yeah. If it's like one person threatening another, I'd say that's evidence, okay? But if it's just the principal saying like, oh, this is gonna make this is gonna make school hard tomorrow. If people are protesting a war, I don't want to deal with it. That's not enough. Okay, make sense? Okay. Um, now for our last part of our lesson, you guys are gonna get a chance to take these thinking skills to a different case. Okay. So real quickly, um, let me describe a real life case that um, you may or may not heard of. And then you basically, in your group of three, you guys are like a Supreme Court. How many people are on the real Supreme Court? 68. Oh. Okay. I know what you're thinking of. You're thinking of Roosevelt, how he tried to add people to the Supreme Court. Oh, yeah. Is that what you're thinking of? Okay. He didn't get away with it, by the way. Okay, there's nine people on the Supreme Court. Why did they make it an odd number? Because they want to die. Okay, because they don't want to die. Good. Okay, so I put you guys in odd number groups of three. Oh, okay. Oh, we have a whole Okay, you guys, the group of four is okay. Maybe I'll be the tenth. Okay, so here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to describe to you what happened in real life in 1984 in a case. And you guys are going to have two minutes to put your heads together and to actually take a vote about whether free speech was violated. Okay? Here's the case. 1984, there's a guy named Joey Johnson in Texas. He's like 25 years old, and he wants to protest the Republican National Convention because, and he's a communist, and he doesn't believe in what the Republicans are doing. So, he and his friends are doing like a protest on the steps of City Hall in Dallas, and one of the friends grabs an American flag from a government building, and this guy, Joey Johnson, takes the flag, pours kerosene on it, and burns it. Okay. Now, at that time, in 48 of the 50 states, there were laws against desecrating the flag. So he's fined $2,000, and he's sent to prison for a year. Okay. But he appeals the case, and he says, my First Amendment rights have been violated because I have freedom of speech. Okay. So, um, that happened in 1984. It took five years to go before the Supreme Court. And in uh, 1989, the Supreme Court made a decision about whether or not it's your First Amendment right to protest something America's doing by burning the American flag. Now, I want you guys to pretend you're the Supreme Court, and I want you to tell me whether or not that's protected speech. Okay? And just as, um, this is kind of a hint in the way that you reason about it, because I'm going to ask you why you voted the way you did. Okay? <clears throat> Think about what we said with freedom of speech, um, you have a responsibility towards like public safety and disruption. We talked about that with the school case, okay. And also think about the kind of speech 
Is wearing an armband similar to burning an American flag? Or are those very different kinds of speech? Okay? You guys understand the task? Yes. Okay, you guys got two minutes. Put your heads together. And you got to actually come up with a vote. Yes. Yes. Texas was one of the important. Yes. Good question. Okay, this is the fastest Supreme Court deliberation ever. But you got the one minute to make a decision on this. Okay? Be so ready to share your vote. And then basically try to sum up what you guys talked about, why you guys decided that. So what was your guys' vote? I don't think it, or we don't think that it violated his rights, three. his First Amendment right. Okay, so three to zero. Two to one. Oh, two to one. Okay. So two to one, you're saying that it is his First Amendment right to be able to burn an American flag? It's not. Like he, it didn't, so it didn't violate. Like oh, okay. So like he um, he shouldn't have been able to do that. Okay, yeah. good. So he should not have been allowed to burn the flag. So you're okay with the law that punishes him for burning the flag. Okay, very interesting. And what was the main reason? Because it put people in danger, like not really in danger, but it's like saying that he can do this and get away with it. Okay, in public. All right. Let's see. I'm just going to put two categories here. Okay. First one is it's okay, basically saying the First Amendment protects that as freedom of speech. Okay. You guys said one vote over here. It's not okay. All right. Where do you guys fall on this? What's your vote? Uh, it's not okay. Not okay. What was your vote, Allie? Uh, three to zero. Three to zero. Okay. What was your reasoning? Because when he burned the flag, it was a disruption of public safety. Okay. Good. Alright, what did you guys say? Um, we have said that it, he should have been arrested and that it was not okay. okay. Because he can't... Even though that it was kind of his freedom of speech, uh -huh. and that this is right, they already had a law against that specific thing. Okay. Okay, good. All right, what did you guys vote? We believe that it does not violate his right. We believe he is guilty. Okay, so you guys are over here also. Yes. Okay? So he sh there shouldn't be a lot on the law that well, tells you you can't burn Because he stole government property, and then he burned it. Okay, so there's another factor in there. Okay, what did you guys say? We also thought it wasn't okay because if it was already against the law, then that already makes it not okay. Okay. And also, it could have been a danger, and there's better ways to protest than burning stuff. Okay. So he has other alternatives besides burning the flag. Okay. Now, it's important to understand, when the Supreme Court can look at a law that a state passed and overturn it, what do we call that system of our government? Well, amending. Not amending. When, when you have different branches of government. What is it? Okay, so all the time in our country, a legislature can pass a law and the Supreme Court looks at it and they look at the Constitution and they say, no, your law is unconstitutional. Okay? What do you guys think the real Supreme Court did? Not okay. Okay, you can hear. Okay. The real Supreme Court in a vote. Five to four said that burning the American flag is covered under your freedom of speech rights. Okay. 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 Okay.
He may have violated other laws, but um, the actual burning of a flag, the, the Supreme Court said, is protected speech. Yeah. Isn't that harmful to the government, though, in some sort of way? Because it, like, doesn't it, um, like, encourage, like, the people to go against Republicans? Republic okay. Right? Possibly this is a danger to our democracy. Okay. What they reason, though, okay, is they said that the speech, burning the flag, is expressive speech. So there actually is, like, intellectual content to it. Now, you may disagree, but um, in the next class that we do, we'll actually look at the summary of the Supreme Court decision. You can see exactly why they reasoned the way they did. Okay? But one interesting thing is that American people, if you ask all the American people, by like huge margins, like 90%, American people will vote the way you guys did, saying, yes, we should be able to have a law that says it's illegal to burn the American flag. Okay? And even Congress has tried to pass a law that's a national law that's saying this form of speech. Okay, so some people don't like the Supreme Court because of that. Other people say, no, this is a necessary function of the Supreme Court to protect free speech. Okay, so, but you can tell by this vote, right? Very controversial <coughs> even among the nine people on the Supreme Court about how they felt about it. Five to four, it's a close decision. Okay, so that's going to wrap up our lesson, okay? Um, I thought you guys definitely hit the benchmark for the standard because you used what you learned from the Tinker Des Moines case to apply it to another case. So great job on that. Next class, we'll actually look at the, um, the exact words of the, the court case. Okay? Thank you guys for your attention. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next class. Thank you, Mr. Chief.